So what's, what's going to happen what if I don't give you my name? Then you can be under arrest. If you are going to threaten us with physical violence, you better make sure you're willing to go all the way, because I am. The way the law works is if, it, if the law doesn't say you can't do it, then you can do it. If you want to lock people up for not breaking laws... All men are created equal is the idea that if it is wrong for one man to commit an act, it is wrong for all men to commit that act. Too often, members of our government exclude themselves from the ranks of equal men, referenced by Thomas Jefferson when he said... Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Craig Henry live stream. In today's live stream, we are going to be taking a look at the newest bill that affects freedom, that affects accountability in the state of Florida. Now, the title says that the state is barebacking the blue, and that could not be more true. And I don't want anybody to think that my opinion is biased here, as law enforcement agents are afforded more rights, more protection under the law than the average citizen. And I want to show you exactly how. So first, we're going to take a look at the video or at the uh, actual law that was passed by DeSantis. So here we are, and I'm going to make sure that you all can see that just well. It's a little bit hard to see. So in this law, it says that impeding, threatening, or harassing first responders, prohibiting a person after receiving a, a warning not to approach from a first responder who is engaged in the lawful performance of a legal duty, from violating such a warning and approaching or remaining within a specified distance of their first responder with specified intent, etc. All right. So that's pretty vague. And of course, there's already laws in place in every state preventing citizens from impeding or threatening anybody, right? So the real kicker here is this harassment provision in it. And of course, we did a little bit of digging into what harassing even means in this bill, and we want to bring it to you. So what I am going to do now is I'm going to show you the tab in which the state of Florida defines harassment as used in this particular code. And then after that, I want to show you the actual video that in which DeSantis uh, gives his rationale for passing this, this law, right? So what you're looking at here is the harassment definition in the law. It says, harass means to willingly engage in a course of conduct directed at a first responder, which intentionally causes substantial emotional distress in that first responder and serves no legitimate purpose. I want to make it very clear that you are not the arbiter of what a legitimate purpose is. You may have a legitimate purpose in your own estimation, but as long as the state says, well, you know, we don't think that that's exactly a legitimate uh, purpose, then you could, you could technically be arrested for harassing a first responder if you do anything. And that first responder claims that they have suffered substantial emotional distress. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in br I'm going to bring up on uh on the screen I'm going to bring up the video in which DeSantis signs the actual bill, all right? We're bringing that up now. I'm waiting through a commercial right now. Bear with me here. What's the population growth been? And he told me that uh, in the last 10 years, the county's population has grown by 43%. I mean, that's uh, that's incredible. I know there's good and bad that come with that because you get traffic and stuff. But I think it just shows you that um, people vote with their feet. Obviously, people come to Florida, but they look to St. John's County as a, as a high quality of life. And part of that is because I think that, that you have really good law enforcement that are working really hard to keep everybody safe. And that's part of the reason why we're here today be able to sign a couple really good pieces of legislation but before we do that i want to recognize everybody who was with us uh, we do have our commissioner for the state florida department of law enforcement uh, mark glass of course we have sheriff hardwick for st john's county sheriff's office we have representatives duggan rizzo Payne, and leak uh, all but rizzo are from this general area 
Uh, Rizzo's joining us all the way down from Miami, Florida for this. So that's great. And then we're going to hear from Deputy Marquise Davis Welsh, who works here at the St. John's County Sheriff's Office. Uh, we've developed a track record in Florida of supporting law enforcement that is quite simply second to none. Uh, we understood how important it is to have safe communities. And the way you do that is to support the people that are putting the uniform on and risking their lives to keep us safe. Uh, this became all important that we took that very clear position when I want to take an opportunity to point out the hypocrisy of DeSantis and many other Republican leaning politicians. Now, I don't want to make I don't want to alienate anybody. I don't want any Republicans watching this to feel as though I hate all Republicans. I'm an anarchist. I don't like Democrats, Republicans or anybody who intends to use violence to get what they want through the vehicle of government. Right. But guys like DeSantis will constantly remind you that where there are more gun owners, there is less crime. I am here to remind you that where there are more police, there is almost always more crime. Look at Los Angeles, look at New York, look at Chicago, right? All of these places have the biggest law enforcement agencies in the world. NYPD is the biggest. Uh, NYPD is the biggest law enforcement agency in the world, right? New York City is not exactly known as a safe place, right? New York City is, is actually known for having cops that won't do their job. And if they do do their job, they're doing it and they're doing it in a violent manner against people that most likely don't deserve it, right? So I want to point that out. They're constantly dying to point out the uh, the statistic of where there are more gun owners, there's less crime, right? But they're, they're, they're never, ever going to point out the hypocrisy of that by saying that, hey, well, where, the, where there's more police, there's almost always more crime as well, right? So we are going to continue on with this. Let's see what Mr. DeSantis has to say. Four or five years ago, you started to see movements to defund law enforcement. You saw a lot of attacks waged against law enforcement, and you really saw law enforcement be a job that a lot of people in many of these jurisdictions said, hey, this is a thankless thing. They had dedicated their careers to it, and they had enough, and then they, they've leave. So we saw that uh, as actually an opportunity for the state of Florida, given our posture was much different. And so a couple of years ago, we enacted $5,000 recruitment bonuses for new law enforcement officers. Some of that is recruiting from other states, but also young people that decide to go into the profession in Florida are, are eligible for it as well. And, and we've had success in both of those. Uh, but if you think about uh, from, so the total bonus program, I'm gonna announce in a second, uh, but you know, we've had people from 49 different states come to Florida to join law enforcement at the at the municipal county or state level, including more than 400 from three states alone. Could you guess them? California, Illinois, and New York. And um, and if you think about what's happened around the country, some of these areas, St. Louis Police Department all-time low in terms of the number of officers. Chicago, 1,600 fewer officers than they had in January of 2019. Of course, New York City averaging 200 officers leaving the force every month. That's not by accident. Uh, they're doing that because they don't have the support of the community. A lot of these politicians weaponize against them. And a lot of the laws are so lax that it gives the criminals the advantage to be able to commit crimes really without major repercussions. And so, yeah, and what he just said that the community doesn't really support law enforcement, I wonder why, right? I'll just leave you guys to, to answer that question in the comments below. So our bonus program has been successful. In fact, I can say that very soon, because you know this stuff happens on a daily basis, but, but probably by the end of this month, uh, we will have hit 5,000 officers who have qualified for our five thousand dollar bonus program and that's a big big deal and it's made a big big difference and of course that's after taxes and so uh whatever we're paying is more than that and then they net five thousand dollars which is really really important so we've distributed 32 million dollars to date in that program the legislature has continued to fund that in this year's budget we're still going through the budget and we'll we'll finish that uh hopefully in the not too distant future 
but I can tell you the 17 million that the legislature has put to continue our bonus program for law enforcement officers has been approved. And so we're gonna have that for, for one more year. And that's really, really significant. Uh, we've also done things to ensure that um, uh, local governments, now St. John's County would not do this, uh, but you know, we've got a big diverse state uh, any municipality could have a handful of people on a city council that would do dumb things. So we, uh, several years ago, enacted a policy to block local governments at the municipal and county level from defunding the police. Uh, we think it's an insane policy. We don't think people should be. So essentially, and what I read into that is when he says that, he's basically going against the ideal of federalism, right? Because the idea of federalism is that you've got like a state or a federal government, but then you've got a whole bunch of lower governments, right? That can do the bidding of the people that live in that municipality. And what he's essentially doing is saying to people, hey, if you don't want to fund these guys, if you think that they're doing a bad job, if you think that they're not beneficial, if you think that they're a waste of your tax dollars, that's too bad, right? Because there's 7 million or, or however many other people in Florida that are out of your community that tell you that you need it. Right. And they're going to force you to have it. So let's continue on with hearing this numb, this numbskull uh, try to justify his his tyrannical laws and his support for these blue line thugs. We don't think people should. Um, why would you want to defund a police canine? I mean, come on. We don't think that they should be doing, um, we don't think there's a justification for it. And what happens is they do this. And when they've done this, they, they even the really uh, anti-police jurisdictions have had to reverse because it's, it's so crazy. So we don't want to put in a situation where any of our citizens are put at risk because you may have a handful of yahoos do something really stupid. So we're uh, uh, the first state in the country to, to stop that in its tracks. And that's been very, very successful. Uh, we've also introduced law enforcement education uh, initiatives in our high schools. And so each school district now is encouraged to establish public safety telecommunications training programs, as well as law enforcement officer explorer programs in the public schools. And part of that is, you know, you go, you students can go. All right, everybody, I don't want to miss out on an opportunity to really point out just how just how ridiculous what what he just said about we don't want any citizen to be put in danger because there's a lack of policing. All right. So I want to bring up a video. Let's see here. And I want everybody to bear with me because this is super important. All right. This guy's claiming and he's just making the, the base claim that uh, in Florida, people are safer because of the cops. Right. But I don't want anybody to forget something that happened just a few months ago, right, with, with, uh, with a Florida cop of all people. So I'm going to bring this up. We're going to take a pause from seeing Mr. DeSantis there on the screen. We're going to go to another video and we are going to see just what the police in Florida do to keep the, their community safe. So here we go. This is uh, this is a video that I'm, I'm sure most people will be familiar with. But let's get right into it. I don't know. My legs went numb for a second. I heard a pop come from. Go this way. Can you move? Yeah. We hold our officers to a very high standard. So what we all just witnessed was a Florida police officer. Uh, sorry, two Florida police officers emptying their clips on a young man that is sitting in the back of a patrol vehicle handcuffed. He had already been searched. And these Florida cops are keeping their community safe by shooting at handcuffed, unarmed, detained citizens in the back of a police vehicle. Jesus, DeSantis, what would we do without the police, right? What would we do in Florida without the police? Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what we wouldn't have. We wouldn't have handcuffed young men sitting detained, completely incapacitated in the back of a patrol vehicle, getting shot at, getting a mag dumped on them. Because a Florida police officer is so incompetent, so stupid, and he's been he's been tasked with the 
job of harassing, disturbing, extorting, and shooting at the citizens of Florida. So that might be something, that might be the reason that a few communities in Florida just don't think they need the police. But let's continue on with DeSantis uh, and his delusional, his delusional just, you know, words that he just continues to spew out of his mouth, his ungrateful mouth, by the way. Every, every dime that this guy gets is at the, the cost of the taxpayers of Florida. Let's continue. They can come to a sheriff's department. They can meet people who are doing this. And, you know, some students may have a different understanding of this uh, prior to seeing that firsthand experience. And so I think what it's done is it actually causes some students to want to get involved in law enforcement because they see everybody working hard and, and, and how uh, gratifying that can be. Uh, we've also created the Florida Law Enforcement Academy Scholarship Program. So that's tuition fees and up to $1,000 of eligible education expenses for trainees enrolled in a law enforcement officer basic retreat training program. You know, we do things like bright futures for, for college education. Uh, so this is kind of the law enforcement answer to that. Uh, we've also made uh, dependent children of law enforcement officers eligible to receive the school choice scholarships uh, to attend the school of their choice. Now, that was important when we did it. Now we've done so much school choice that pretty much everyone is, is covered at this point. But still, I think that that was something that a lot of people really, really appreciated. And it shows that we appreciate the service. Uh, where crime right now in the state is at a 50-year low. And that only happens when you have people that are wearing the uniform. We are going to, we are going to, well, let's continue. Let's hear his spiel. Safe. Uh, if you don't support them, if you, if they feel like they're under the gun, you are going to see crime rise. That's just the nature of it. Uh, so we have a uh, overall crime down nearly 10% year over year, uh, murder down 14, burglary down 15%, robbery down 17%. And look. And I want to highlight this. All right. Because really what's been happening is, is that Standards for law enforcement, not saying that they were ever high, but they've dropped drastically. It is my theory that most criminals nowadays have entered the law enforcement profession, and every crime that they commit is either going unprosecuted, unreported, and, and certainly unreported. So that may contribute to the law and to, to the crime rates going down, right? When you've just got a whole bunch of blue line thugs going out and committing crimes, well, they don't ever get those, those crimes don't ever make their way into the statistics. Right. But if you've got some some citizen, some taxpayer committing a crime, it, sorry, not not a crime, committing a violation of a Florida code, then that does get recorded. That does get documented. And that that, you know, if you've got all the real criminals going into law enforcement, it's hard to it's hard to document. But I don't want to waste everybody's time. I've got an interview with Flex Your Freedoms that I've got to do around 730. And I don't want to miss that. So I want to show you guys the real the real. uh well, the meat of the story, let's say. I've got a two-minute clip that I'm going to show you all. Let's see. Let's make sure it's up on the screen. And here we go. So we're going to do a couple a couple bills that uh, I think provides uh, support for people who are wearing the uniform and recognizes that, you know, we've got some 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 strange currents going on in our society right now uh, that really seek to delegitimize law enforcement and what they're doing. So the first bill, uh, SB 184, uh, is going to yeah. prohibit the harassment of a police officer or first responder when they're actively doing their job. You shouldn't be in a situation where you're at a traffic stop, uh, you're responding to, to a call of someone in distress, and then you have people come trying to interdict or trying to harass you from performing your, your duty. Uh, so if you do that, you know, we view that as a problem and now you're going to be held accountable. The other. So I want you guys to listen to that again, and then we're going to go over what he says is harassment. Stop. Uh, you're responding to to a call of someone in distress. And then you have people come trying to interdict or trying to harass you from performing your, your duty. Uh, so if you do that, you know, we view that as a problem and now you're going to be held accountable. The other bill. So they view harassing police as a problem. And of course, harassing anybody would be a problem, right? I mean, but this is the deal. When you pay somebody to perform a job for you, and that's what taxpayers do. Taxpayers supposedly pay police. I mean, they don't supposedly, they do pay police, right? The police's salaries are extricated from the taxpayer fund, right? The police don't pay taxes. They get the money from the tax pool 
And then after that, then they give a little bit of it back. But the, the real deal is, is that their salary is figured after tax, right? They, they get that money. They give a little bit of the tax dollars back, but they're not actually producing any goods, producing any services that other, that other people are willingly paying for. They are taking that money from stolen tax dollars, right? And so we are going to look at what harassment is in the eyes of the state of Florida when it, with relation to this IC code. What you're looking at is my face. What you're looking at now is the harassment definition for the state of Florida for this particular code. Harass means to willfully engage in a course of conduct directed at a first responder, which intentionally causes substantial emotional distress in that first responder and serves no legitimate purpose. All right. So that last part that serves no legitimate purpose, that could probably just be left out because if the judges, if the courts don't like you, if the police don't like you, anything you do is going to be seen as serving no legitimate purpose, right? So that can just be left out. What we're really looking at is this part right here, is that somebody has to intentionally cause emotional distress. And of course, it's not going to, it's not going to slide if you go up on the stand after you call a cop a effing thug or after you insult him that, you know, well, I didn't mean to cause emotional distress. I was just redressing my grievances with my government. That is not going to fly because the court will completely ignore you. I promise you. I promise you. If you think that they won't, try going to a trial in America, right? The judges side with the blue line. They side against the people. And it's because the blue line is a lobbying group, right? The, the police have things like the Fraternal Order of Police, the things like the Sheriff's Association of America, right? These things are lobbying groups. These, these entities are groups that go to Congress, that go to multiple different legislatures all around the state, and they lobby to get pro-law enforcement, anti-rights laws passed. Well, the citizens don't have a collective group that lobbies for them. And even if they did, I mean, how would you ascertain that a majority of the citizens want that group to, to advocate these things, right? So it's an, it's, an impossible, uh, it's an impossible thing to have. The police have the Fraternal Order of Police, the FOP. The sheriffs have their association. The state police of multiple different states, they're in the governor's ear constantly, right? And these are the people that the legislatures listen to. These are the people that, that, have, uh, that have an influence in the legislatures, right? But the people don't have an influence. So what we think and what we have to say, it, it only really matters to us when we're on that court stand, when we're charged with a criminal offense and our life is on the line. But try to get everybody else to care about it. And of course, I know that there are some people out here who care about it. Brilliant people. But the thing is, is that the vast majority just don't care. They, we cannot force them to care either. But I'm going to tell you one thing. Police, police certainly care when it's their jobs on the line, when it's their, their livelihood on the line, and they don't care if they have to walk over your grave to get to their goal. They're going to get there, right? So that's what, that's what this live stream is about. This rule is a copy and paste, basically, of the Indiana 25-foot law. This rule is clearly unconstitutional and clearly petulant, right? If somebody came up to me on the street and started, and started harassing me, causing me... Uh, substantial emotional distress, not only would I not be allowed to have that person taken and thrown in a cage, but ultimately it would be extremely childish of me to try to hurt that person. The, the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, is a very true saying. There's a reason that we're taught it in kindergarten, right? It's not because it's only relevant in kindergarten. It's because it's a great piece of information. It's a great, great saying that is relevant to your whole life, right? If sticks and stones can break your bones, certainly you shouldn't allow people to hit you with them. But if words can never hurt you, what's the harm, right? What is the foul of having somebody criticize you in public? And by the way, I get criticized, right? Not most of the time out in public. I think people feel like they can't criticize me out in public because maybe I will have an adverse reaction. But the reality is, is that people are allowed to criticize me just the same as they're allowed to criticize the police. The only difference is, is when you produce sounds with your vocal cords that offend police officers, they will deprive you of your liberty. They will deprive you of your life in some cases. And by the way, you don't even have property, right? If you have to pay to own property, you don't have it. So that, that provision of the Constitution, 
that provision of the Declaration of Independence has been completely lost. But everybody, I have got to go. I have got an interview with Flex Your Freedoms coming up. I want you all to look forward to that. That is going to be intense. Flex Your Freedoms just did 10 days in jail, and he is an American hero, not only for that, but because of his activism in the past and the activism he will maintain into the future. So everybody have a great night. I am Craig Henry with the Henry Media Group, signing off. Take care.